Hallelujah and blessings in Jesus, friends. Welcome back to Hayekadosh Ministries, where holiness is a way of life. Jesus is truly King of kings and Lord of lords, and the Holy Bible is our only standard and authority for truth. And the people of God with hearts overflowing with praise and joy say hallelujah. Well, friends, today is January the 5th in the year of our Lord, 2018, and this is One a Day for the Soul. Now, we're continuing our journey through the story of the Bible, and today we are going to discuss the most pivotal story that is contained within the entire Old Testament. And as you will discover, if you don't already know, this is a foreshadowing of things to come how God is going to use the story in the life of a man to foretell of the events that will bring redemption to all of mankind, all of those who will surrender to his way and to his will. And so if you have your Bible, turn to Genesis chapter 22, and let's read the word of God together, picking up at verse 1. Now we are told it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham. Now that word tempt in the King James Version, specifically in the Hebrew, means to test. And so God is going to test Abraham, and he says unto Abraham, Take now thy son, thine only son Isaac. Now remember, this is a foreshadow of things to come. So Isaac is going to represent Jesus. Abraham is going to represent God the Father. And so he says, take thy son, thy only son, Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains, which I tell thee of. Now, theologians tell us that this mountain is the same exact mountain that Jesus was eventually crucified upon. Isn't it amazing in the foreknowledge of God, some 2,000 years before Jesus was crucified, here is Abraham offering his only son on that very mountain. Well, Abraham, having developed over time a deep trust in God, immediately rises up early in the morning, saddles his ass, took two of his young men with him, Isaac his son, took the wood for the burnt offering, and went into the place which God had told him. Now notice in verse 5, Abraham said unto his young men, You abide here with the ass, and I and the lad will go yonder and worship, and come again to you. I and the lad will come again to you. But God had already told Abraham that he was going to sacrifice his son on the mount. Now Hebrews chapter 11, picking up at verse 17 says, by faith, Abraham, when he was tried or tempted or tested, offered up Isaac. And he that had received the promises, and what was the promise? That from your seed will come many nations. Well, because he had received these promises, in verse 19, he knew that Isaac would not meet his death, but even if he were to be killed, even if Abraham was to go through with the sacrifice, he accounted that God was able to raise him up even from the dead because he stood upon the promise of God knowing that God is faithful, that God is true. His word cannot be broken. And so it says in verse 6, back to Genesis chapter 22, that Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering, laid it upon Isaac his son. He took the fire in his hand and the knife, and they went both of them together. Now Isaac, a young lad at this point, probably in his early teenage years, spake unto Abraham his father and said, My father. And he said, Here am I, son. He said, Behold the fire in the wood, but where is the lamb for a burnt offering? And Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they both of them went on together. And they came to the place which God had told him of, And Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order. He bound Isaac, his son, laid him on the altar. And Abraham stretched forth his hand, took the knife, and made himself ready to slay his son. And the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here am I. He said, Do not lay your hand upon the lad. 
neither do anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest God, seeing thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, from me. Now I know. Why? Because actions speak louder than words. There are many who claim many things today. There are many who make a profession with their mouths, but their hearts are far from God. Why? Because actions speak louder than words. That's why Jesus said, you know a tree by the fruit that it bears. We should be able to look into our own lives and the lives of others and determine whether they are true followers of the Lord Jesus by the way they live their lives, by the things they say, by the way they act by the sacrifices that they make. And Abraham immediately lifted up his eyes. He looked and behold, behind him, a ram caught in a thicket by his horns. And Abraham took the ram, offered him as a burnt offering instead of his son. Now Abraham called the name of that place Jehovah Jireh, which simply means the Lord will provide. And the angel of the Lord called unto Abraham out of the heaven the second time, and said, By myself have I sworn, saith the Lord, for because thou hast done this thing, and hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, that in blessing I will bless thee, and in multiplying I will multiply thy seed as the stars of heaven, and as the sand which is upon the seashore, and thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies, and in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed. Not just the Israeli nation, not just the Jewish people, but here, simply put, God is saying, I so love the world that I will give my only begotten son, and I will not hold back in offering him as a sacrifice, so that whosoever believes across the face of the earth shall be saved. And I think that's important to point out because it seems that many people think that God began to offer to the whole world his love when Jesus arrived on the scene. But it was originally God's intention to reach the hearts of all men everywhere, even from the beginning of creation. And he says, I will do this because you've obeyed my voice. So Abraham returned unto his young men. They rose up and went together to Beersheba, and Abraham dwelt at Beersheba. Now, the reason that this story is so important is because we see that some 2,000 years later, on the very same mountain that Abraham was going to offer his son, God does offer his son. And so many times we focus upon the misery of Jesus, but can you imagine what was going through the heart of the father during this time? His son, who had been with him throughout all time, was being spit upon by his very creation, was being mocked, brutally attacked, tortured, and eventually killed. And we see that there is no pride in the Father because Jesus said, if I wanted to, I could call 10,000 angels and they would deliver me. And pride would cause him to do so. To say to these men who were so filled with arrogance, to prove to them, his might, his majesty, his glory, but that would be pride. And yet, as we know from Philippians chapter 2, beginning at verse 7, he made himself instead of no reputation. He took upon himself the form of a servant, and he was made in the likeness of men. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. And it was for this reason that God so highly exalted him. And as we follow his example, that's why James tells us in chapter 4, verse 10, if you too will humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, as Jesus did unto his father, he will lift you up. And so we see both in this story, the obedience of Abraham 2,000 years before Jesus arrived on planet earth. And yet we see the obedience of Jesus in humbling himself and being obedient to the things of God. And we know that God demands the same obedience of us. Now keep something in mind. When Abraham lived at this time, he did not have the Old Testament or the New Testament. 
He did not have the writings of God, the stories of men who sought to serve God, to lead him and to guide him. And we might say today, if God spoke to me as he did Abraham, I would show the same amount of obedience. And yet if we take our lives and we align them with the word of God, which we have the Old and the New Testament, the written word of God that has been preserved for us throughout time, we see how short we fall because our lives do not meet the standard of the teachings of God. Everything we need to conduct our lives on a daily basis in meeting the standard of God, in being found faithful unto God, is contained within the pages of this book we call the Bible. And it is our responsibility and our duty to know it, to obey it, and to live it, so that God too may say of us, as he said unto Abraham, now I know that you fear God because you are obeying what I have said in and through my word. So as we stop and consider this morning, this story in the life of Abraham, who gave the one thing or was willing to give the one thing that he loved most, no matter what it cost him, no matter how much it hurt, he was willing to give the thing he loved most so that God would be honored through his obedience. And yet for most of us, we have so much, and yet we give, we sacrifice so little. Friends, I want to encourage you to examine your life very closely. Everything you say, everything you do, everything you watch, everything you listen to, everything you read, every aspect of your life, and ask yourself, Does it bring honor and glory to the God whom I serve? Is my statement of Christianity simply lip service? Or if I were to be convicted by a court of law for being a Christian, would there be enough evidence to convict me, to condemn me? Would they find enough evidence in my life to prove me a true follower of the Lord Jesus? That's a sobering question, friends, and one each of us must carefully consider. Well, it blesses my heart that you are again with us this morning, that you are learning the Word of God, that you desire the Word of God, you're hungry for the Word of God, and I trust that it is doing its work in you, conforming you to the Lord Jesus Christ, our Master, our King, our Savior, and our God. Now, as he wills, and until next time, friends, I truly love you. I'll see you on the next video.